if you are in the algebra-based physics course and you're working on energy, you know, the first thing that you see, that's a why. Uh, when you start talking about potential energy, is this gravitational potential energy is mgy. Of course, we're using this. Work is the change in energy, and then that's one of the energies. But there's also this one right here. You have this uh, expression for the gravitational potential energy. I'm switching pen. That pen's getting bad. Okay, pen switched. So where does this come from and how do you show it? And the answer is you have to do calculus and to do this one, but, and I don't want to do that. But I'm going to show you where that comes from without calculus, and it's going to be fun. So to do that, we really need to understand this situation right here. Let's take the following uh, situation. Here's y equals zero down here at the bottom. I have a ball and I really, with the velocity v1 equals zero and it has a mass m and I release it from rest and it falls and it lands down here. So right before it hits the ground, I wanna find out how fast it's going. Well, I can use the work energy principle. I could say work is gonna, there's a gravitational force mg. I have delta r is that way also. Uh, so the work is gonna be mg dot delta r, or you could write that as m g delta r cosine theta, where theta is the angle between these two vectors, which is zero, so this is one. So the work done is gonna be positive, and if I say this is equal to uh, y1 and y2 is equal to zero, then I get m g, the change in y is gonna be the final y. Oh, I've already taken that into account. I've already, I've already I've already taken into account the direction. I make this mistake all the time. So the distance is going to be y. I mean, these are in the same direction. So it's just y1 minus 0. So that's the work done by gravity. It's positive. It's going to make this increase in energy, right? So this is going to be the change in kinetic energy. And that's fine. Now, the point with gravity is that it's a conservative force. And a conservative force means that I can take any path <clears throat> and the work would be the same. I could go this way. I could go this way. Any of those paths, the work would be the same. And so if that's the case, then I can actually move this to the other side. I can move this work to the other side and make it negative. So I can say, if I have my system of I feel bad, this is mg dot delta r. Delta r is indeed down. If I move that to the other side, well, let's just keep going. I, I feel like there's a minus sign, and I'm gonna make the minus sign again, so that's fine. The system of the ball plus the earth, then I can say the work is zero, and that's gonna be equal to a change in kinetic plus a change in gravitational potential, where this is my potential. So let's just see if we get the same thing, right? So I want to find the same change in kinetic energy. So the change in potential is going to be, uh, I'm going to define ug as mgy. So this is going to be 0 is delta k plus the final potential down here, which is 0, minus initial potential, which is mgy, 1. And then if I solve that for delta k, I get the same thing. So that's, everything's great, right? If I find the work done moving this ball and I move it to the other side of the equation, it becomes a potential energy, but I have that negative sign in there. So really we say this, if you want a potential work done by a force, uh, then the, the change in potential is negative the work done by the force. That's important. And this is a change, right? So we only can write this as mgy because uh, we have some constant position that we can reference from y is equal to zero. We never see mgy. We always see a change in this potential. Okay, now let's do a more complicated case. I'm going to drop the ball again, and this time I'm going to drop it from really, really, really high with a new piece of paper. So if I do that, I can do the same thing. But now I have to treat the earth as the earth. And so here's my ball. And this is going to be r, the value r. And, but now I have the gravitational forces this way. I'll call it fg. I'll write it as a vector. And I'm going to let it go down some distance. And the magnitude of that force is g 
mass of the earth, mass of the ball over r squared. Now, I can't calculate the work going from this, we'll call this r1 down here to r2. I can't calculate that work uh, because the force is not constant, right? As I move further, I can't do work equals uh, f dot delta r. I can't do that because this is not, there's not one force. It gets stronger as it gets closer. So we're going to cheat. Let's say delta r, I'm going to use the scalar value, is small. If that's the case, then I can go from here to there. That's my delta r now. And this is kind of constant. If delta r is, is small, then fg is equal to constant. So I can calculate delta work. Uh, the work done over that is just going to be f dot delta r. I can do it if the work, if the delta r is small. But then if I want to go from r1 to r2, I have to do that again. So I'll have to break this into a whole bunch of little pieces and then add up all the works going down. And that's what we're going to do. Now, if I want to, let's say, uh, let's say the mass of the Earth, I know, and the radius of the Earth, I know. And let's just start this with 10, 10 times the radius of the Earth. So R1 is 10 times uh, the radius of the Earth from the center. So in that case, I may need, that's a huge number, I may need delta R is, let's say, 1,000 meters. I'm just going to pick 1,000 meters. So I'm going to first move this by a step of 1,000 meters down closer to the surface of the Earth. And during each of those steps, I'm going to calculate the work. And that's what I'm going to do. And then after that, once I've calculated the work, that's my change, that's the negative of my change in potential. Okay. So let me just calculate the work. We'll come back to the paper and then do a comparison uh, for that. Okay, switching to, I don't want to break this into a whole bunch of steps so and do it personally. So I'm going to do it in the computer. That's what computers for. They serve us. They help us for now. Who knows what's going to happen in the future. Okay, so I have Python here. I will give you the code. Um, I've already entered G which is the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth. So let's start with our, um, and I guess I'm just going to move in the y direction. I want to do it with vectors. Let's just, let's just do it in the y direction just because it'll be as simple as possible. We won't have to deal with vectors. So let's say y1 is going to be equal to 10, 10 times re. So my, my origin is at the center of the Earth. And I'm in, moving in the y direction just like in that picture. Now, how much, how far am I going to move? I'll call that dr, even though I, it's a thousand meters. So I just want to move the thing down, right? I just want to move it down and then and print that out and see what happens. I guess I should make a graph, but let's just move it down. Let's make sure we can move down. So I'm going to say, uh, no, let's just say y. I'm going to call this y, not y1. Uh, so I'm going to say while y is greater than re. So as long as that y value is greater than the radius of the earth, I'm going to keep moving down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I guess I could print it, but I don't want to print it. So let's just move y. So I'm going to say y equals y minus dr. So that's going to move it down a notch, right? I'm moving it down. And that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to print that out print y final equals y. So, so I can actually do that in meters. Uh, I can say y equals y minus dr, and it will change the value of y. So it's a very simple loop. It's a very simple program. So at the end, I should get this printed out, and it should give me the 6.33 times 10 to the 6 or something very close to it, or not run at all. A comma. Oh, I put the comma in the wrong spot. See, everyone, it's okay to make mistakes. See, this comma should be right there. I should have two commas. And I made another mistake. R3. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Okay. Y final. That's exactly what we want. So now I'm going to calculate the work along each piece. So if I want to calculate the work, I'm going to call it D work. And if I want to find the total work, I need to add all of those up. To do that, I'm going to need 
to have a work of zero. I'm going to start with the value of work of zero. And each step, I'm going to calculate the little bit of work and add it to that. So let's calculate the little bit of work. So I'm going to say D work is going to be equal to, I need to calculate F. Let's calculate F. F equals uh, in the negative direction, but dy is in the negative direction. We're already taking that into account. So I'm going to say g times mass of the earth. I did that three again, times m, which I don't have. Let's say m equals one. It's a one kilogram ball divided by uh, r squared. But in this case, I'm using y, so y squared. So that's my gravitational force. And then the work is just going to be f times dr. Right, because it's positive, both those are positive numbers. So the way I've done it is positive. It's a little bit easier if you do it with vectors, but that's fine. Now I'm going to add that D work to the total work. Work equals work plus D work, and then that's it. And I can print down here, let's print out the final work. Print work total equals work. And it, this won't mean anything, but we can just do it anyway. So there I did, I did work on the ball. And that would be equal to the change in kinetic energy. And if I, it put a comma there, that's kind of weird. If I uh, make that a change of potential, that would be the negative of the change of potential, right? The potential energy would be decreasing, which means the kinetic energy is increasing. Let's make a graph real quick. Uh, I'm going to plot that work as a function of position just for fun. So I'm going to make a graph. G1 equals graph. Uh, title equals work done by gravity. Uh, X title is going to be equal to, uh, it's Y really, but I'm going to call it R just because that's what, the way we normally see it. R in meters. And then the Y title is going to be equal to uh, work in joules. And you don't have to put these comments and stuff like that. And let's put width equals 500, height equals 250. And then I need a graph, so I'll call it F1 equals G curve. Color equals color dot blue, just to make it look nice. And then down here, I'm going to plot uh, F1 dot plot. I'm going to plot the horizontal position is going to be my R value, which I'm calling Y. And then my vertical position is going to be my uh, total work. Yep. And there you go. Okay, so that's the work done. Uh, and then this is the total work as I move along. And I'm actually moving this way, right? I'm going this way because I'm getting closer and closer. So I'm doing more and more work. Great. Uh, now, if I want to, if I want to call that a potential energy, I could plot that as negative of the work. So let's do that. Let's call this uh, a potential. Gravity potential. Gravitational. U. And then we'll call this U. And then all I need to do is put a negative sign there. And you'll notice that uh, it looks like a hill, right? As the ball is moving down the hill, it's going to speed up. And that's exactly what we want. That's exactly what we want. Now, the only thing I left to do is to show you that this is the same as the other gravitational potential. Uh, so I'm going to do this. Um, This is the change in potential. I'm plotting actually the change in potential. Um, so what I want to do is to set. Hmm. Now I'm just going to plot the potential, and I'll, I'll talk about that. It'd be a good story. Okay. So let's calculate uh, the the actual gravitational potential. So I'm going to call this U T for theoretical potential energy, and it's negative g times the mass of the Earth times m divided by the distance, which is just y. And let's plot that. So let's make another graph. F2 equals G curve. Color equals color dot red. And then down here I can plot that. F2 dot plot Y UT. And let's just see what happens. My printer is loud. There you go. So they look the same shape, but they're different. And there's something very different about them. So I'm actually calculating the work done from starting position one to starting position two. That's the blue curve. The other one is U. 
negative g m1 m2 over r but you'll notice that at 10 times the radius of the earth u is not zero so it's not going to start at zero it starts at some value but where would this be zero well it's zero if r goes to infinity so we choose we choose to, to set this potential such that it has a zero value at r equals infinity so it's infinite away zero potential energy and we choose that and this other blue curve i calculated the work and i started from zero so it's not the same thing but they're the same shape and hopefully that shows you that this is plausibly the same thing um, like i said you can derive this with calculus but i'm just showing you it's the same thing and we could use this change of potential to find the, the velocity of the ball but i really wanted to show you that the work done by a variable force is the same as that and i think that's good enough so let me save this code. I'll save this code. I'll put a link in down below and you can have it if you want. It's not the best calculation because it doesn't use vectors and stuff, uh, but it did indeed work. Literally, get it? Work. It was a good joke. Okay, the end.